Hi, Plant Science. Thanks so much for checking out this video tutorial. I know that some of you guys are auditory learners or maybe want to hear a teacher's voice once in a while. So I'm putting together this nice little video for you. Um, feel free to pause or rewind or whatever you got to do at any point um, so you get the most out of this video. You're also, of course, welcome to look at the slides on your own as well if you prefer just to do that and process things internally. So um, you guys know with this assignment, you guys are going to be making your own landscape design and or if you're doing this seeing horticulture and that's how you got here, you are going to be critiquing uh, landscape or floriculture design. So this video is essentially designed uh, to teach you about the principles of design, designed to teach about principles of design, kind of funny there. Anyway, so we are going to give you a brief overview of the principles of design and name that principle and talk about the six principles that we've outlined. And then you guys are actually gonna go ahead and make your own designs and or find and critique design. So we'll do some practice here as well, okay? All right. I know all of you guys miss reading these learning targets in class in your best Minnesota accents or your best deep voices. So um, again, today we're just going to look over look over these objectives very briefly. You'll be able to describe the six principles. You'll be able to demonstrate implementation. You'll be able to evaluate the effectiveness of principles into a landscape plan. And you will be able to defend your choices for plant and landscape feature selections based on these principles of design. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I like to teach kids about when I'm talking about the principles of design is balance. Balance is probably one of the most important elements to consider. Balance is the ability for a design um, to appear even and level. And they're broken down into three types, and we're going to investigate these a little bit closer. Okay, So you have symmetric balance, asymmetric balance, and proximal balance. Okay, Our first example is symmetric balance, and this is when a design is a mirror image on two different sides. This design, for some people, may seem very formal, Check out the uh, picture that we have over to the right. That's a very formal arrangement or landscape design, okay? If we were to take a line or a ruler or a yardstick or whatever and divide right in the middle, it would be a mirror image on both sides, okay? This is symmetrically balanced. But this is one of the simplest ways um, to demonstrate balance in your design, okay? So mirror image if you wanna make it very formal. Symmetric balance, boom, one out of three. Number two is asymmetric balance, okay? This is when a design has weight on both sides of a landscape and is not mirror, okay? So this house that we have here, it's not really a landscape design, but look at the house. Seems kind of trendy, modern, and spunky, okay? It can be, it be a little bit informal, but it has a nice little appeal to it. I'd live in that. I don't know about you, but I think it's a pretty cool looking house, okay? So plant materials don't need to be identical on both sides of an asymmetrically balanced design, okay? I would argue that this is still a very nice and trendy house and that it will probably sell pretty well on the market. Um, similarly with our landscape designs, to demonstrate balance, it doesn't necessarily have to be half and half the exact same on both sides, okay? And the last form of balance is proximal or distal balance, okay? This is the distance or proximity of a landscape and how it assists in balancing. And this is used when there are large buildings, mountains, or trees in the background, okay? To demonstrate this, one of my students last semester actually came up with this analogy. Put your hand in front of your face, okay? And as you, and if you have like an object, like I'm looking at the swivel chair in my classroom, but right now my hand looks a lot bigger than that chair. But if I start to move my hand out like this, okay, it makes the chair look bigger and my hand looks smaller. But if my hand is up here, my hand looks bigger than the chair. The same thing is true with this Photoshop Christmas tree in front of the White House, okay? The White House looks a little bit smaller and that tree looks really, really big right in front of us, okay? So... You can use proximal or distal balance to make your house look bigger or smaller, okay? If you decide to plant a lot of trees or a lot of shrubs, excuse me, that are very low to the ground right in front of your house, it's going to make your house look a lot bigger than it actually is. But if you plant trees, it may, may, look at, may, it may make your house look a little bit smaller depending on the house, okay? Okay, so balance is the first principle. Then we have focalization, and I refer to focalization as focal area, focal point, focalization, focal whatever, focalization, okay? Focalization is a specific point that lures the eye in, and it captures our attention. This could be a door, a statue, or a plant. 
but you don't want to overuse your focal point or it will make an overwhelming image, okay? Take a pause here real quick and identify what you think the focal point is on this picture, okay? Or this landscape design. I would argue that the statue right here is probably the focal point, okay? Your eye goes there immediately. But you notice that off to the side of this focal point, there aren't like really bright yellows or really big trees or plants or things. It's kind of subtle. It makes that focal point really stand out. Those other plants don't draw the attention away from that focal point. They want you to recognize that statue in that landscape design. That is the focal point, okay? Next is simplicity. This for me is the hardest principle to adhere to simply because we're asking you to do so much in your landscape design with so many different elements, okay? So simplicity makes it easy for the eyes to see and not too overwhelming. It can be very tempting for us to put big um, colorful plants or big trees or um, varying different types of shrubs and plant material. But at the end of the day, we want the design to be simple and not too much going on, okay? Mr. Ramstead is not a very simple person, so simplicity does not come easy for me. But um, too much variety in shape, texture, color can cause it to become overwhelming and not very pretty anymore. But take a look at this nice little picture we have over here. I think it's pretty simple, okay? I would definitely put that in my backyard if I could, okay? We got a nice little water feature. We still have nice symmetric balance on both sides. We have those little um, nice hedges going around. This is a very simple yet effective design, okay? Rhythm and line, okay? So rhythm and line kind of go hand in hand. I will ask you to demonstrate rhythm. Line is a little bit harder, but rhythm is a repeating theme throughout, kind of like think music. When you listen to your favorite country or rock or rap song, there is a rhythm or there's a beat that goes with it, okay? It's repeating throughout the same kind of system of notes, okay? Similarly, in a design, we have a similar repeating theme, whether it's we use white plants or red plants, um, in our design, or we have a similar layout on both sides. Okay, rhythm kind of comes naturally in a lot of landscape designs if you're following the other principles. And line is using hard or um, soft line. So in this picture here, I see more soft lines demonstrated, and that's in that curvy area, right? One could argue that there are straight lines though, because, or there's, um, yeah, straight lines or hard lines because our little shrubs over here are in square rectangular um, pits, okay? So that is a hard line. These are soft lines, and there is a nice rhythm going through here because there are the same plant material that is being used on both sides, and it is also kind of a similar theme. We got some nice color um, branding going on throughout here, okay? So rhythm and line. Next is proportion and scale, and we kind of talked about this a little while ago, but this is the relationship between the size and placement of objects or plants. So you want to consider your vertical, horizontal, and distance or spatial differences. We talked about this when we talked about proximal balance, but the viewing from different perspectives from standing, sitting, or looking at a distance. When we are planning a landscape design, it's so critical, especially when it's for our house or a business, that we consider what it's going to look like when people are driving by, when they're ringing the doorbell, like at all these different angles, we don't want it to be too overwhelming or not pretty from any of those different areas, okay? A lot of different perspectives. I'm not going to ask you to be that overly detailed if you're making the design, but proportion is definitely a big thing to consider, especially too. Um, my grandparents have a very nice house, very, very nice, but they have, when they got there, they planted some trees. Now the trees have gotten really big and in some parts of their house, it's hard to see out the window because the trees are covering it up. Okay, so, I mean, obviously you can do some pruning and we can cut the trees down, but, you know, you want to make sure that the trees are not overpowering the house. Okay, proportion. And lastly, unity is when everything comes together. Okay, so when we have all five of the other principles coming together to create a nice visual for the eye. If parts of the landscape do not fit in, that is not unity, okay? I have a nice picture here. I want you to hit pause right now and try to identify different forms of 
and the principles of design throughout here. So we'll go to the beginning again, just as a refresher. Okay, so we have balance. It could be symmetric, asymmetric, proximal. We have focalization, which is making a focal point, something stand out. Simplicity, rhythm, proportion, and unity is when everything comes together. Okay, hit pause. So why don't we talk about this, okay? First thing that pops up to me is the focal point. I would say that likely the door, or maybe even this potted plant right here, is the focal point, okay? My eye goes there, okay? Then we have balance. Do you think this is symmetric or asymmetric or proximal? I would argue that it is probably more symmetric because it looks pretty similar if we had that line in the middle. Both sides look pretty darn similar, okay? Good deal. Proportion. I would say that this is a very nice proportionate design, okay? It makes the house appear a little bit bigger than it um, probably is because these trees, or shrubs or whatever they are, um, are very, they're not small, but they're like a nice medium size. So it makes the entrance look bigger than it probably actually is, making it look like a mansion rather than like a smaller house. Um, we also have very nice um, rhythm going on and line going on. These are some nice soft lines throughout here. And I would argue overall, it's a pretty simple design, right? It's not too overwhelming. They do have quite a few colors, I will say that. But the colors go well together, right? We have some nice yellow accents. We have kind of this nice repeating pink red theme going throughout. Um, so I would argue this is a very nice unified landscape design. So when you go ahead and you either number one, um, make a landscape design if you're doing that for your choice assignment. Or number two, critique a floral design or a landscape design. I hope you are able to look back on this lecture and recognize those elements of design or principles of design and um, inform yourself and your designs on how to move forward. So hopefully this was not too overwhelming and you found this to be fun. Um, Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. Uh, till then, take care, stay healthy, and have fun with this. I'm excited to see what we come up with.